to another edition of uh, Stock Talk. My name is Amon Reyna. I'm an investment coach here at Sage Investors. And uh, today I want to talk a little bit about risk. And uh, one of the core elements that I, uh, when I work with people in terms of helping them make better investment decisions, in terms of helping them uh, analyze and in terms of buying and selling stocks is, is understanding the risk concept uh, that plays into uh, an investment decision. One of the things about stocks is, is it, there's well, every time you buy a stock, and it doesn't matter if you're buying a bank stock or if you're buying like a biotech company, there's always that element of risk out there. There's always a, a probability that you could lose some or all of your money. And it's just by the nature of what stocks are in that if a company goes out of business uh, and the assets are liquidated, the first people that get access to those assets are usually the, the bondholders, the creditors, uh, the preferred shareholders, and the stockholders, the common stockholders are usually the last in line to get any money. And most of the times, by the time it's their turn, there's usually no money. So risk is really, it's really important to understand the risk profile. Right, my phone is ringing. <laughs> it's really important to understand that risk profile of the companies uh, that you're analyzing and, uh, and, and, and using that as a component in framing your investment decision. Now what I've been noticing a lot now in the last maybe few years is that this whole concept of risk is just totally being overlooked now when people make investment decisions and in terms of how the day-to-day -day actions of what's going on in the market. And I wrote a blog about this and I called it our rest in peace risk, um, basically saying it's uh, talking about really the demise of, of factoring in um, these probabilities and, and, and your investment decisions. So uh, I wrote a blog about it. You can check it out on my website, uh, www.sageinvestors.ca and uh, talk about this stuff. But basically I just want to kind of today just kind of give you some, uh, some reasons why I think uh, risk is just totally being ignore, ignored now by, by most people, by most institutions, by most investors really. Um, the one big reason really why risk is being overlooked is, is just the prevalence of cheap money. And we've been living in a world in the last seven, eight years where interest rates have been next to zero, next to rock bottom and zero, we've, we're dealing with uh, central banks that have been implementing policy to keep interest rates low by printing money, buying bonds, just putting, throwing a lot of money into circulation. And what it's done is it's kept interest rates really low and it's just really hard for savers to find yield. And if you're investing, you're just, it's really hard to find yield. And so people, what's been happening is just people have been looking to the stock market and saying, you know, just if I just hold a, bot, a stock that pays a 3% yield, that's, I'm probably going to make more money doing that than just putting my money in a bank holding a GIC or a, a T-bill or something. So, and that's a big reason why stock prices have been, just been surging in the last uh, three, four years. It's just the amount of money, it's just money flowing in. All this extra money just, is just flowing into stocks. And uh, the reality is, as I said, stocks are risky pieces of paper. They're on the risk, on the investment hierarchy, they're among the most riskiest assets to own. But it just seems like nobody really cares and people are just throwing money into stocks, just parking their money in the stock market uh, and risks be damned. The risk profile of the companies and the businesses behind those stocks, you know, who cares? And uh, to me, it's, it's just a, it's a really serious issue. Um, one way you can quantify how this is happening is just looking at the VIX index. The VIX index, a lot of people talk about it as, describe it as the fear index and representing the amount of fear, essentially, uh, investors, the volatility of stock prices uh, that are out there. And over the last five years or so, the VIX index has been trading mostly in the low teens. And that's really a reflection of that investors are, ha are very comfortable putting their money and exposing their money to higher risk, uh, higher, more riskier investments. To give you some context of that, during the financial crisis in 2008, 2009, the VIX index was trading almost like in the 50 to 70 range. It was off the charts. Um, the fear factor was just uh, palpable at that time. So cheap money has been a big driver in terms of people getting off the whole concept of, of avoiding or just not even considering risk in, in terms of uh, factoring it into, into an investment decision. Second area which has really driven this uh, phenomenon that I'm observing is that is ETFs. The whole ETF index fund passive investing uh, movement. We've seen a surge now of outflows from actively managed portfolios, mutual funds, pension funds into more passively managed uh, index funds or exchange traded funds which essentially kind of mirror or mimic uh, the returns on uh, various broad-based indexes and also specifically uh, more value-based kind of uh, ideologies and stuff. Um, 
the interesting thing that I've known, and the whole pro pro concept of, of an ETF or an index fund is just when you buy an index fund, you're basically essentially, uh, let's say you're buying an index fund on the S&P 500, you're essentially putting one chip or one dollar or buying one share of every company on the S&P 500. And so you're, it's like a roulette wheel. You're, you're putting basically your chip down on every number, knowing that at least you know some of those companies are gonna pan out and some of those companies aren't gonna pan out. And so that's kind of the key because in my time working as an investment analyst, I was hand, I've analyzed thousands upon thousands of companies. And at one point I was uh, working when I was doing my own practice, uh, I was building a database of uh, companies on the TSX, uh, formerly TSC 300. And for the many years I was doing that, I noticed that you can count on the fact that maybe half the companies on there would be profitable, and maybe half of the other, other the rest of those companies would pretty much be kind of lousy companies and not very profitable, and you just you kind of wonder why they're on the index. But there's all kinds of technical issues on how a company gets on a, on a broad-based index. But that's the reality is when you put your money in an ETF, it's, uh, you're thinking like, well, well I'm, I'm, I'm broadly diversified uh, amongst the whole uh, universe of stocks. But the reality is half of those stocks aren't, you know, on average, half of those stocks just aren't really well-run, well well-managed companies and, and profitable. And from a risk perspective, that's not really great. You don't want to be having that kind of exposure in your portfolio. But it's done under the guise of diversification, which has its benefits, but there's a point to it. Um, and this whole concept of, of the proliferation of ETFs really feeds into the, sort of the, what, what I'm seeing essentially is now this whole rebranding of risk in that we're seeing now cost uh, being more emphasized than overall the risk profile of, of an ETF. And a lot of times now the, the, the marketing material talks about, you know, the management expense ratios, the MERs front and center. Um, while you don't really hear anything about, well, what's the makeup of that portfolio? What's the risk profile of the portfolio? What's the probabilities that uh, you know um, I could lose money on this portfolio? You don't hear anything about that. It's about cost. Cost is, to me, cost has replaced risk. And uh, for, for, from an investing perspective, I think that's totally wrong and that's totally inappropriate. Yeah, you want to keep your cost down to a minimum as much as you can, but you don't want to keep it down for the sake of just keeping your cost down because. Let's say you find a really nice uh, Vanguard ETF that uh, charges you like 0 0.05 uh, management uh, management fee. That's great, but if the ETF falls, goes down, the stock market goes down and goes down 20%, and the ETF goes down 15%. You know that 0.05% commission you're paying really you're not going to really care about. You've just lost 15%, and that concept really is not being that side of the the. The value proposition that uh, ETFs and most in financial institutions are offering now just doesn't get talked about, and to me that's really concerning. Um, so those are really the big drivers that I'm seeing that are kind of forcing risk to be kind of shoved away or shoved under a rug somewhere, um, and I don't think it's a good thing, and I think it's long-term going to have serious repercussions, and I, I really try with the people that I work with, and when I'm coaching people and teaching people, it's just you have to consider risk. Uh, in every fundamental investment decision you're going to make, whether you're buying a stock or selling a stock. Now, having said that, though, you know, risk is, as I said, it's getting pushed aside, but it's still out there. And the only place you really see risk being discussed and talked about is at the front end of your relationship with a financial institution, or now you know these robo advisors where you get to fill out a questionnaire and uh, that kind of assesses your risk profile, your tolerance for risk, and then ultimately a portfolio and some recommendations are given to you on what you kind of portfolio you should design, and uh, that's skewed to your comfort risk comfort level. And that's out there, and that's good, and that's an important thing. But what I'm seeing though is it kind of stops there. And basically, people make the, or the assumption is that, well, if this is your risk profile, this is your tolerance for risk, well, that's what it's going to be for the rest of your life. Well, the reality is life changes, right? We all enter different phases in our lives, and our comfort level of risk is going to change. And But unfortunately, a lot of these uh, uh, portfolios that are designed for people through financial advisors, through you know uh, mutual funds and stuff, don't even factor that in. It's just basically, let's figure out, let's just get a snapshot of you at the start, and that's at the end of it. Furthermore, the, uh, when you even break it down, there's been like undercover stories done, and I, I don't know if anybody saw the Market Watch uh, show up here in Canada, uh, they did an undercover story, uh, got a whole bunch of people wearing cameras walking in, talking to a financial advisor saying, I got 20000 bucks to invest, can you help me out? And they would design and talk about all these different products and uh, 
uh, strategies that they could go to, but they didn't t mention one word about risk. They were basically talking about, oh yeah, it's a slam dunk, you're guaranteed you're going to make this kind of uh, steady income, um, but there was nothing about, well, you know what, there's a probability that it may not work out. And I was fascinated, I found it incredibly fascinating. So, yeah, so if anything come out of this is, uh, risk is such an important element uh, that you have to factor in your investment decisions. Don't overlook it. Uh, and don't brush it by the wayside. And if somebody asks you to brush it by the wayside, if you're an advisor, if you're working with a financial advisor, you know, ask them about these things. Or when they're proposing products and strategies to you, ask them that question. I was like, how risky is this portfolio? Is this comfortable with, with what, I, what I'm comfortable with? And uh, if they can't answer that question, then that's a bit of a red flag. And uh, you kind of have to ask those questions, and it's really important. It's something I do actually working with people. I coach people who actually work with financial advisors. I coach them how to work with their financial advisor. It's kind of a thing. And these are the types of questions that I kind of like to ask them too. So that's all I got. And so again, um, risk, it's, it's a four letter word, but you need to use it a lot in when you're factoring your investment decisions. So that's what I got for you today. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a shout. You can sh uh, shout out uh, through my website, uh, sageinvestors.ca, or uh, through an email through there, or you can, I'm on Twitter, um, tweeting about all the market rumblings of the day, of the era, of the time, of our time. Um, you can hit me at, uh, at Sage Investors and just uh, direct message me if you want me to talk about a specific concept here on Stock Talk. I'm happy to do that. So uh, thank you. It's been another, this has been another uh, episode of Stock Talk. My name is Amon Reina of Sage Investors and uh, we'll catch you again.